Well, hello YouTube. Welcome to the channel. My name is Doug. And what the heck is an out-of-band LTE power management system? Well, I'm going to tell you. It turns out, if you work with servers a lot, you know that they have management channels, out-of-band management channels. And that's sort of a backdoor into the server so that if the main communication channel through into the server is not working, the backdoor, the out-of-band access, will give them control of that server through a different channel, a backdoor, so to speak. You don't really have that with home servers and with uh, your your Comcast modem or your your cable modems or things like that. And sometimes if you, if you need to reboot the, that equipment and it's not responding, you can't use traditional web-enabled power switches and things like that. So I've been wanting to try this for a while. I got on eBay, bought a few things, and I'll show you what happened. Well, that may not have been the best explanation ever, so let me show you a little graphic I put together here to kind of explain how this works. Your internet modem provides connectivity to your computer, as shown here in the graphic, but the internet modem has its power connected to a PDU, and I'll explain what that is in just a minute, and that PDU power is controlled by a separate modem, a cell modem, that provides you the ability to come in in case the normal router is not responding. You can come in through the back door with the cell modem and cut the power and then reboot that device and bring the main connection back up. That's the idea behind a out-of-band management system or power management system. And they make these things, and they're very expensive for secure server environments that are, you know, five or $6,000. But that's not really viable for your home or for a small business where maybe you don't want to drive across town to, to bounce a server or bounce a modem that's got hung up. When you, What you would really like to do is just pull out your phone, hit a button, and cycle the power to that device remotely. And that's that's my goal here is for a vacation home and for some of the clients that I manage, rather than drive downtown 15, 20 miles away, I can cycle the power remotely and get the service back up quickly and not have to spend that time driving. So that's kind of the, kind of the overview of the process. All right, so the first thing I bought on eBay is a device called a iBoot Bar. It's produced by a company called Data Probe, and these are devices that are used in server racks and enterprises. And picking one up used is a great way to get some quality equipment at, at an affordable price. Now, if you look at one of these things on eBay, the older generation is called the iBoot Bar. The newer generation is called the iBoot PDU, or Power Distribution Unit. And you want to get the PDU and not the older. Now, sometimes there's no difference in the price. But the older units are not as secure and they are not cloud enabled. And that becomes particularly important if you don't want to open up any holes in your firewall, do any port forward in or things like that to get to this device. If it's cloud enabled, it's a lot easier to get to and a lot more secure for your network and for your access. Basically, what this device does is it plugs into power. You plug your modem, you plug your switches, you plug your security gateways, whatever you want to control into this device. And then you can, if you choose to, just plug it into your internet connection. And as long as your internet connection is working, you can dial into this device and bounce the power to any of your network devices and recycle them. The problem in that configuration is that if your internet is not working, then you can't access the device to bounce the power. So that's that's why we're going to be looking for the next piece of this of this equipment experiment, which is the piece that lets me connect this PDU to a cell connection rather than a, a cable connection. Okay, the next device in this puzzle is called an Ethernet serial gateway. This particular one is made by a company called MicroHard, which is in Canada. 
And what it allows you to do is put a SIM card into this device and anything that you plug into the serial port or the ethernet port will be connected to the internet. Now, <clears throat> one of my concerns about this was could I find affordable cell, cell service pricing that you know wouldn't break the bank uh, I also a little bit concerned about security because this device will be on the internet uh, on the cell phone system and the internet as well so this device has a lot of options for using uh, secure methods of communication you can use uh, open VPN you can use regular VPN you can use a variety of, of uh, secure methods of access to this thing or you can just set it where it won't allow anybody to access it from the cell system at all it'll just pass through the signal from the cell system straight to whatever device you have plugged into it so it's as secure as you want it to be uh, in my case i'm just trying to get it to work to begin with so we'll see what happens in that regard but this is the second piece of the puzzle the PDU will connect to the Ethernet serial gateway, and that should put us online and give us a backdoor into our system. Okay, like almost all internet devices today, the micro hard Ethernet serial gateway has a, an internal web configuration page. So here I've accessed the page, and you can see that it has a number of settings and menus uh, to allow you to configure the device to be used in whatever way you're trying to accomplish. Uh, it looks like here it's been online for about three days. We'll talk about the cell signal next and, and how, I, how I provided that. Uh, in this case, I have set the device up just to, as a pass-through so that whatever IP address the device gets will be passed straight through to the PDU and I did go ahead and get a fixed IP address from the cell provider to experiment to see if I could just make my device uh, available on the cell system uh, straight with an IP address and that does work that's not very secure obviously because it's exposed to the world and uh, since I've discovered the PDU has cloud capability I'm not going to keep that fixed IP address live so I don't care if you see it here it won't be there by the time this video is is live basically the Ethernet serial gateway is a router much like a traditional router you can see it shows the cellular signal strength there it'll show some RF lights when it's transmitting it shows that it's online shows it has power but unlike a traditional router it doesn't have WAN jacks up at the top here you can see that instead of a WAN jack you've got a SIM card so the WAN connection is provided by the telephone system the cellular telephone system and once it is provided then it goes into the functions of a traditional router it can be assigned a private IP address it can also be assigned the address the IP address of the SIM card itself if you want to do that and on the back side here you've got the LAN out and of course you got the power connection and you've got a serial port and a USB port up on top and you can use those as well that's what's unique about the Ethernet serial gateway I wasn't sure what all settings would be required to get this thing to work but it turns out there was really only one you have to set the APN related to the SIM card that you have plugged in and of course each SIM card will have their own APN for the Telnix, which is the company I decided to use for cellular service, you can see that their APN is data00.telnix. Very easy to set up. All right, so now let's talk about the cell provider. I tried a couple of different ones, and the price varies, obviously. Uh, the one I settled on is a company called Telnix, and they sell LTE access for AT&T and or Verizon. It'll use whichever one is in the area that you're in and has the strongest signal or whichever one you configure. And it's available for one cent per megabyte. So if you look at this chart here that shows when I first was setting the device up, I used 
a, a good bit more. You can see the graph is, is up high, uh, used a few dollars uh, in a few hours. But on days where the device is simply standing by, Typically, it's using five or six megabyte, which is five or six cents per day. So I expect this to to cost about a dollar eighty to maybe two dollars, uh, two dollars and twenty five cents a month. So I can do the whole year for twenty five dollars, thirty dollars. That's great. That's a very inexpensive online backup access to power cycling the devices that I want to be able to get to remotely. So I'm very pleased with, with the reliability and the service that Telnix has provided. And uh, so far, so good. I don't have any complaints. Uh, the system connects reliably. Uh, it's, I've not had any connectivity issues. And uh, the price, you can't beat it. So check them out if you're looking for a cell provider for this kind of stuff. They also do all sorts of other uh, services as well. They're a, a SIP provider. If you're doing voice over IP stuff, they, they do all kinds of, of uh, virtual infrastructure. So take a look at them if you're in the market for those kinds of services. Not, not sponsored by them, but I'm happy with what they've provided so far. Okay, so the moment of truth. What happens when you hook it all up and you hook it all together? When we sign in to the PDU, actually we're going to go to the cloud, the uh, Data Probes cloud service for the PDU. And when we sign in, the PDU should appear and it should be coming through the cell system rather than the internet through the, the site. So this would mean that if the internet was down, I could cycle any of the, any of the devices that I have hooked to the PDU without a live connection at that site. So let's, let's take a look and sign in. They do require 2FA, so you can see here that they ask for username, password, and then second factor authentication. And this is what their interface looks like. And so I've got eight devices here. I can cycle any one of them, turn them on, turn them off, whatever's needed. They offer other services within this PDU. You can auto ping sites, and if something stops responding, you can automatically cycle power. But those things take bandwidth and will increase the cost of, of keeping this PDU online uh, as, a, as a standby system. So it's up to you if you want to spend that money and, and have that happen. But in my case, the, uh, none of the automation of the PDU is, is in effect. It's just waiting for me to manually come in and turn a device on or off or cycle the devices. And so far, it's working great. I'm, I'm very impressed there uh, there are cheaper uh, Ethernet serial gateways. I bought one that had a few more options. Uh, I thought it would be fun to play with and experiment with. But I've seen some of the some of the LTE cubes from the same company. They're only around a hundred, maybe to hundred and forty dollars rather than the two seventy nine I paid for this one. So roughly speaking, you know, a hundred hundred dollars for the PDU, hundred fifty dollars for the the uh, gateway. You know, 250 bucks, and then $20 a year, whether that's worth it to you or not depends on your use case. In my case, uh, it saves me driving uh, downtown sometimes or driving around town to various sites to, to get to devices that might have hung up or, or have an issue. Definitely worth it and definitely, uh, definitely a success in my case. Well, I hope you found that interesting or useful. Um, this is actually part one. I found a different solution that I want to show you uh, in, a, in a different video, actually from a, a company that produces a, a similar device. It's not made specifically for networking, but it works very well with networking, and I'll, I'll be posting that soon. I hope you found uh, this information useful and interesting. I just kind of wanted to show the result of... Uh, my experiments and what I was able to come up with. It, this may not be the best way. You may know of a better way. If you do, post it down in the comments. Uh, tell me about it. I wanted a way to, to have control, and this has done it for me. Like I said, uh, if there's a better way, I'm all ears, so share those comments and suggestions. Or feel free to tell me uh, how dumb I was <laughs> and that, that there's a much better way to do it. I'm I'm open to listening to those kinds of of directions as well. 
Thanks for watching. Thanks for checking out the channel. If you're not a subscriber, uh, if you think this channel might be interesting to you, I'd appreciate your subscription. Uh, if you found the video entertaining or useful, give it a thumbs up. That helps me out with YouTube. Thanks for, thanks for coming by. See you next time. Take care.